Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action. We are back for a death metal vinyl update. I've got 10 records to go through, so let's get into it. We're doing an old school rough and ready update this time. Got a tape playing in the background. We are listening to the Noxious Ruins Volume 8 compilation tape, which comes free with the magazine. I've shown these off plenty of times. This is the latest edition. Came out, I think it was December, so uh, hopefully you can still get copies. I got mine from MSUO. Extremely Rock Productions gets copies in, so yeah, go check them out. Great cover as usual. Plenty of good articles, uh, interviews with bands. There's the bands on the tape. Uh, always good artwork to look at. There we go. Shub Niggerath interview. Massacre. Um, got um, some old uh, wrestling looking stuff here. Um, more artwork. Got a big grave interview, which is really cool about the history of that band. Lots of detail, lots more artwork. So yeah, great magazine. These are really good fun to read through, and uh, yeah, highly recommend you check them out. The tape, which we are taking a listen to here, number eight, we've got uh, Baron, we've got Cave Grave, Encirclement, Festigor, Depigus, we've just got a new album out, Deterioration, Worm Alter, Septic Fumes, Tortuary, great name, Dezerologi, which is an interesting name, Dezerologi, Decryptal, they just did a demo, I need to get that, Hacked Apart, Seeping Protoplasm, I need to get that demo, Excrable, Hemorrhoid, and Vacuous Depths, I think, out of the UK, so solid tape, we'll have that playing in the background. So like I said, 10 records, the first one here, we're going to get straight into finally got my copy of Disguised uh, Malignant Entering the Gateways Finnish death metal that doesn't sound very Finnish uh, more like a somewhere between like a North American German Swedish hybrid to these ears is equal parts flesh crawl as there is like considered dead era gore guts uh, the chunky groove of that first bloodbath EP and first album very meat and potato stuff, uh, and nothing wrong with that. I find this really enjoyable listening, and it's, it's a really well produced album too. Focuses on good riffs, good hooks, just straight up death metal, uh, very bludgeoning. And the band are young, and I don't just mean like they've not been at it long. I mean, ages range from 18 to 21 across this band, which is pretty phenomenal. Like, it's great to see such a young uh, band, such young guys playing this kind of pretty old school sort of early mid 90s death metal uh with such proficiency even the leads um i mean that's always been finland though like go back and look at old uh, demigod i mean they're all young guys i guess finnish is just a finland's just a very musical country they know what they're doing over there uh but that gives me hope bright future for disguised malignants uh, what they're showing here is just solid great death metal only two guys on this they've now got five guys in the band uh, i guess they're touring so if they bring three more guys to the band for the second album, I imagine it's going to be pretty solid stuff. Um, so yeah, I foresee a pretty good sofa more. Uh, not to say this isn't really good, but uh, I reckon it's all up uh, from here for these guys, Disguise Malignants, on Prosthetic Records, uh, which is really cool. Get them on a, a nice label. And even got a really nice uh, sus splattery color LP. I think that's pretty cool. I'm not a huge colour variant guy, you know you know that, but uh, when, it, when it matches, like, you know, the cover like that, yeah, you'll get me, you'll get me. Equally happy with black, but if this is what they're making, that's what I'm buying. So, yeah, good stuff from Disguise Malignants, and you get a... Um... Oh, right, we do have the five members on here, so there you go. Metal Archives does say sort of only two on the um, album. Um, let's see, we've actually got some information here. Uh, recorded early 2022 uh, with Felix on drums, guitars, vocals, synth and soundscapes and Atos on bass uh, and then guitar solo by Daniel Gamash. So that is what Metal Archive says uh, but they've pretty clearly now become a five piece. Very old school, look at that. Necrophobic shirt over there, Coroner, got a mortiferum. Good stuff. If you just like death metal unchallenging you just want the groove you want the you want the bludgeoning you want the just fists in the air stuff disguise malignance give it a go
Next up, we have the latest EP from Melbourne band Carcinoid Excomium to Extinction. Excomium. I don't know what an excomium is, uh, but uh, it, it's on its way to extinction, that's for sure. So yeah, the latest EP from these guys, uh, they had a solid full length back in 2019. Um, then they did a couple of splits, splits in 2019 and 2020 with uh, Gozada, great band, and Charnel Alter, another really good band, another uh, Adelaide band, I think they are. Uh, but this is their last release with their original vocalist, Josh, who seems to have left after the recording. Uh, and um, they have a new uh, singer now, so we'll see how that goes on future recordings, live shows. Uh, the band, man, they found their speed on this EP, that's for sure. They've always been... I mean, they're written up as a death doom band, I guess, yeah, at times. Not on here. This is this is this is more just death metal. Sometimes pushing death grind. I don't hear any doom at all on this thing. Blistering fast double kicks, uh, straight up death grind blasting. Vocals going from that sort of standard mid range growl to a very very Melbourne sounding grindcore shriek. It's got to be said. Um, the uh, Side B opener on this one, Morbid Curse. It's only five tracks. Uh, sets the pace, absolutely. The grinding, fast intro, and then like a thrashy, uh, sort of moshy midsection in there. Really, really good. It's just a fun EP to listen to. Um, rumbling bass of, uh, where is she, Jess, down there. Uh, very prominent, along with the dual guitars. So like all the instruments are really well balanced. The bass is not just hidden there. Um, I didn't make it to the Sydney show. These guys did sort of June last year. Unfortunately, had um, they supported Malignant Aura, um, but I'm I'm kind of regretting that off the strength of this EP. Um, this is definitely the band at their most ferocious, and um, yeah, liking this trajectory. If this is where they're going, I'm all good with that. Um, we got a few things in here. There's the uh, band and all the credits and some lyrics. Nice little insert there. And um, the LP, this one is just on black. I don't know if there was other versions, but just a nice black LP. And, because this is the local pressing, I got it from the band. They chucked in, this is really cool. They chucked in a set list from the Bendigo concert, uh, which is down in Victoria. So yeah, it's all nice and crushed up from being on the stage and kicked around. Probably got someone's boot print on it. Um, so yeah, that was cool, a little addition, throwing in the uh, set list, um, which, you know, I imagine is uh, something that international buyers are not going to get, just the, the people to buy from the band, and, you know, probably had a couple kicking around. So there you go, Carcinoid, Excomium to Extinction. I need to know what an Excomium is to avoid my extinction, but man, loving this EP, really keen for another album. Next up, we have the second LP compilation of various splits that this band has done. I think this is a good way to hear this band. This is Fluids with Fluids of Death 2. It just got wetter. Once again, uh, yeah, the, the compilations they do have a bit of a theme. The Fluids of Death 1 uh, look like the Faces of Death uh, VHS, but they made it look like a laser disc, had a laser disc logo. This one looks like Traces of Death, um, which is just another one of those Mondo True Life death things. Um, look, there's an old mate there on the front cover. It's had a very bad night, I think. And um, yeah, you know, this Mystic Smells Productions. I have no idea if that's legit or not. Um, but anyway, fluids. Uh, what we get on this one, you get uh, three, their sides from three splits. So their splits with Oxidized Razor, Putrid Stew and Pharmacist, great band from Japan. Um, and it comes in, jumping ahead of myself, but comes in a very nice Oop. We lost that. Comes in a very nice translucent red. I think that's a really neat. And um, yeah, so if you don't know fluids, I mean, this is just drum machine death metal, brutal death metal, gore grind kind of stuff. Um, obvious notes to mortician, uh, agoraphobic nosebleed. I reckon Aussies are going to hear some fuck I'm dead in this and the day everything became nothing. Just that sludgy, grimy kind of stuff with the, those those vocals that um, the, the Day Everything Became Nothing were pretty renowned for. Uh, and that just blistering drum machine blasting from Fuck I'm Dead. Um, the songs go from, yeah, really fast grind to chunky down-tuned groove. Um, and uh, some sort of elements of like glitchy percussion in there, like electronics and things. Um, 
kind of fits the whole vibe that they're going for. Like it feels just sort of a little bit off. They throw in this sort of little electronic stuff. Uh, sounds good. Um, vocally, kind of sounds like Hemdale. Um, just sort of spewed out really deep gargles. Uh, monstrously heavy, absolutely not subtle in any way, shape or form. And like I said, I think these compilations that they do is probably the best way to experience fluids. I mean, you can go out and buy all the seven inches and all the CD EPs and you're gonna have a massive collection of fluid stuff. They've done a couple of albums as well. Honestly, I just like kind of waiting and getting these um, these comps. So, I mean, at some point, I imagine we might get a fluids of Death 3. I think it's a good way to experience them. Um, there's the inside, so there's the three seven inches that uh, the songs are from. There you go, good stuff. And uh, yep, there's some more gory looking stuff there that's gonna make me tick that box on YouTube that says contains sensitive imagery or whatever the hell they make me do. Um, so yeah, some of those seven inches in CD EPs are not the easiest thing to obtain, but these things, I and mean, this is on Hell's Headbangers. So yeah, you want to check out Fluids, I recommend checking out the Fluids of Death 1 and 2 compilation, like I said, on Hell's Headbangers and whatever the hell Mystic Smells is. Yeah. Good stuff if you like a brutal and drum machine. Next up, I reviewed this EP uh, for the Heavy Metallurgy a couple of months ago and absolutely loved it, particularly the second track. We'll get into that. But I now have my own physical copy. Stoked to have stenched, gorging on Mephitic Rot. Man, I just love that cover. It just It's such a demo tape. Uh, and the thing is available on tape, so, you know, there you go. It's just basic line art and that great logo. Um, uh, on putrid green it's just amazing this is a one-man band out of mexico uh and with a title like gorging on mephitic rot i think you kind of know the kind of down tune guttural slime ridden death metal you're going to get the band does not disappoint uh they take heavy influence from say undergang cerebral rot that kind of stuff rot um and um yeah the tracks on here they just reek of the sewer ah just putrid stuff six tracks on this um it's swampy big focus on db down tempo groove um the slow portions make you check that you're actually playing this at 45 rpm because they get so sludgy um it does sound like you're playing it too slow but it's great the almost sort of burp whispered vocal somewhere between like demolish and uh sort of like a pitch shifted evolved um the second track second track putridity mass ex excretion worth the price of entry alone just buy it just for this track it is disgustingly heavy from the outset with this creeping riff over these sluggish drums I find it so addictive and immediately re-listenable. It, it's definitely one of those tracks, I've got it digitally on my phone and I just go back and listen to it over and over. Like I play the whole thing, but I get to track two, play it three times and then let it continue because that track is outstanding death metal. Um, you can get it on CD and you can get it on tape, but this LP has two extra tracks. Chunks of pustulant rot and a skull covered in putrid slime. So you want those two extra tracks, damn straight you do. Um, got a few things in here. It was available on a slime green, but I missed that edition. Uh, I like this though, green on sort of black and white photo. There's old mate there from Stenched. Another nice piece of art there. Looking very disgusting. And yeah, so I ended up with the, uh, the black edition, but um, yeah, the green one, I think went kind of quick directly from Blood Harvest. Would have been nice, because I imagine it was the same green as this cover and it looks absolutely filthy, but uh, you know, black is fine. It is always fine. Um, so yeah, stenched, gorging on mephitic rot. It's definitely my favorite demo from last year. Now I've got on wax, I can play it over and over, and it's just filthy. Next we have a five piece out of Chile. Uh, and this cover should give you a clear indication the kind of death metal you're going to get. This is putrid yell, consuming aberration, old school, horror themed, HM2. You get your dismember guitar tone, you get your dry and raspy Martin Van Drunen style vocals, short, mostly sub four minute length songs, and it's predominantly fast with a lot of DB. Just ticking all them boxes for that kind of death metal and it's all here. Not much in the way of double bass, it's pretty much focusing on that uh, that sort of groove and the D beat. Um, a lot of fast, chunky stuff in here. 
Um, and uh, yeah, you know, despite all the usual tropes, the raw edge to the sound that Putrid Yell have on this, uh, sort of like a plug in and play kind of nature to the songs, it really appeals to me. Um, this does not sound, there's the band, does not sound at all like one of those 50 Roger Johansson bands that all sound exactly the same, um, which is the kind of thing that annoys me about the HM2 bands, and you know, I guess he's sort of largely to blame. He's not bad, it's just that all his bands sound exactly like Paganizer, so yeah. Um, this is just, yeah, Consume Aberration is just filthy and nasty stuff, um, and I tend not to be impressed by the HM2 kind of bands. Um, Putrid Yell is the first one, to really impress me since I found a uh, Frostville Japanese band uh, a couple of years ago. Um, nothing usually gets me in that specific style of sort of, you know, dismember grave kind of worship. Pusherudiel have got me though, and uh, yeah, really enjoyable. These guys have been demoing since 2012 and have certainly prepared for this first full length in 2023. Lots of good demos, I expect. You said just nailed it. This is just exactly the kind of sound you want from that kind of chainsaw guitar, horror themed, short and sharp songs. And there's, there's a heap of them on here. There's what? Yeah, there's 10 songs on here. Um, and yeah, it goes, you know, I think it's sort of like roughly 35 minutes, 40 minutes or so. So yeah, four minutes of track. Good stuff. Um, out on Pulverized Records from Singapore. Um, I actually just got this one off an Am uh, Amazon. That was an easy, easy purchase for me. There's the band. Four piece, old napalm death shirt there, looking good. And uh, there's the lyrics, good stuff. And uh, yeah, just a black LP again, very nice. So yeah, um, first of all, I mean, if you're all in on the HM2 stuff, then just go and buy this, you will like it. Uh, but if you're a bit like me and you, you prefer that sound to be played by the originators, um, and uh, you know you, you're not usually won over by that sound by newer bands I'd say give Putrid Yell a go because Consuming Aberration it stands above the pack alright next up we have a very nasty slab of Black Death from that New Jersey scene the burgeoning New Jersey scene Altar of Gore Obscure and Obscene Gods uh, originally out on cassette by uh, label NVNM in 2020 uh, this is the 2023 reissue on Red Translucent Wax. We'll take a look at it soon. Uh, I had this on CD, but man, this thing is savage. It is a, they are a savage band. It's play in that Titan Blood and sort of Profanatica style. It's raw and evil, blasting, borderline war metal. It pulls back enough that it's got more of the death metal feel to it. Um, there's enough variation that I won't call this war metal. Um, on this full length, they were a one-man band, uh, I believe, uh, that has uh, changed up a bit now, but um, it's Tom, the guitarist from Death Fortress, great black metal band, and Blasphematory, another excellent death metal band. So, yeah, really, really good pedigree there, and um, this is ugh, it's just fucking outstanding. <laughs> it's what this is. Uh, I love how churning and guttural everything sounds. Everything sounds churning and guttural. The vocals are deep, nearly garbled like in Vesta. Um, sometimes they're pitch shifted even. Uh, the guitar and bass sound like a swarm of low flying wasps. Ugh, man, um, the only thing that finds like a higher register is those chaotic dive bomb solos. You know how much I like those. And there's a few of them on here. Um, otherwise it's all just churning down there in the depths. Um, and like I said, I had this on CD, but that kind of annoyed me. This is not a CD band. This is a vinyl band. Uh, I had the comp well, I have the compilation that they put out of their two demos. I think it's a 2019 demo and a newer one. I think it might be 2021, maybe even 2022 demo or EP. And they put that on a um, LP reissue and that's great. Um, and I don't, yeah, I didn't want to have that on LP, but the album on CD, bah, not going to happen. Love that they did a reissue. Um, this has to be played analog. Um, there's an uh, old mate there, um, the acolyte of the foul ones on all instruments and vocals. Like I said, I think they've expanded now to a bit more of a lineup. Um, could be wrong, but I think that's what I read. Either way, this is this is fantastic stuff. Really, really is. If you like that Black Death. Uh, bestial Black Death stuff, but yeah, a little bit more on the gory side than Altar of Gore. Psh, great stuff. Um, yeah, so out of Nameless Graves, under license from uh, NVNM. Take a look inside. 
and uh, you just get the LP, there's no inner or anything, but it is on that lovely translucent red, which goes wonderful with the logo. Um, yeah, black, red, white, everything you want from this style of very bestial black death. Altar of gore, obscure and obscene gods. Highly recommended. Next up, we have the debut full length from this former Israel based band now coming out of Germany. This one floored me, absolutely came out of nowhere too. Uh, Death Siege, Throne of Heresy, 29 minutes, 45 RPM of blistering 2001 era rebellion, Chrisian, Angel Corpse, Infernal Fire of just black death metal. So, so good uniformly fast incredibly blasphemous uh destructive and it reaches the end so quickly you get to the end of side b and go oh christ it's done already because you know it's it's rain in blood length and 45 rpm it just goes straight through punishing drums especially in the kicks uh razor razor sharp riffs the vocals are barked out just a bit like those aforementioned bands just dry raspy hateful uh the last track on side a satanic tyranny it's a short instrumental that feels like something Trey Atzik Tote would have done on Domination. You know, that kind of little keyboard things that he was doing on that album? Um, found, yeah, it, feel, it feels very Domination. Uh, but the rest of the album is just blasting and triplets, rabid triplets, tremolo riffage, out the wazoo. Savage, savage stuff. Uh, there's some mid-paced moments that take on like a dark sort of Covenant era Morbid Angel, but really... You know, this is that early 2000s, particularly Rebellion. I mean, it even looks a bit like Rebellion's uh, cover from that, I think, 2000 or 2001. It's just Blitzkrieg. Um, this came out tail end of 2022 on uh, Everlasting Spew Records. Um, I didn't hear a single thing about this. Um, I only found this because I was uh, placing an order of Blood Harvest to get that stenched and a few other things. Um, and I saw this cover and went, that looks infernal. Gave it a listen and went, that's infernal. And chucked it in the car because yeah it's good stuff um this this bestial cover just took my eye i mean it's straightforward it's just it is literally just hell that is just the flames of hell lapping at the throne of heresy uh, and i'm glad i did because this is a real eardrum cleaner absolutely uh take a look inside we get uh the lyrics one side on the other side, quite straightforward, and uh, the LP, which is actually quite heavy, it might be 180 gram, pretty heavy, there you go, look at all those grooves, I mean they're short and sharp songs, these things, nice black, and the um, uh, hype sticker I transplanted to the inside there, always like to keep those, so yeah, if, if you like that early 2000s just crazy death metal, blackened, infernal, satanic, nasty stuff death siege throne of heresy absolutely give this a go next up we get another debut full length uh from a relatively new norwegian death thrash band thrashy death metal band however you want to look at it this is some good stuff this is sovereign with altered realities there's about a dozen bands called sovereign so look for the norwegian one um i'd say, I'd say it's death thrash but it's definitely on that death side uh very dry but pretty technical sounding. Um, sort of think that early Pestilence, uh, Sadus as well for the thrashy bits. A little bit of Nocturnus to a degree. There's some sort of light keyboards that come in here. Uh, but I hear quite a bit of fellow countrymen uh, obliteration on here and absolutely uh, execration, which is not surprising as they share drummers. Uh, Kato uh, Sivisrid, I hope I said that right. Um, He's a great drummer in Execration, and he's exactly the same on here. It's just, he's very dynamic and very, I mean, for something that's a bit more, not just meat potatoes, death metal, it's sort of got thrashy, it's got a little bit of tech into it. Great drummer for this style. Um, very analog, very barbaric sounding to it. Uh, very jangly bass that's on par with the guitar in the mix. It's just good. Harsh, throaty vocals, not the Van Drunen style, but it's just very, it's just harsh. I think harsh is a great word for it. Um, not all speed, plenty of chuggier moments on this, opportunities for that lead guitar to really wail. Um, the leads are played by, um, well, one of these guys, one of them. Um, his name is uh, Tommy Jacobson. Uh, he's also the guitarist in Dodsvgard, D-O-D-S-V-K-A-D, Dodsvgard. Eh, my Norwegian. I'm trying my best. 
uh, and they had a couple of excellent demos out in the last couple of years and put together as a compilation CD called Compendium, I think. Highly recommend checking that one out. But yeah, he's really good on this as well. Um, and uh, yeah, most importantly, I find the songs on here are all very much unique and stand out. Um, they're very distinct, very memorable, and uh, it's very musical. So, you know, often there's long passages of just instrumentation without the vocals. And you don't realise there's no vocals, you're just sort of getting swept away in where they're going with the music, often with the lead guitar. Um, and uh, that's when it gets a little bit of a, just a little bit of a feeling of the chasm to it, I can hear. So, yeah, really good musicians at play here with Sovereign. Um, definitely harkens back, though, mainly to that earlier Pestilence and Satis. These guys know their darker thrash. They do, absolutely. Um, some of the members do live stints in uh, another thrash band, uh, Necromantheon, and some of them have uh, done live uh, stints in Nocturnal Breed, who've been around forever. So they know their thrash, absolutely. Um, I was lucky to get this copy in December. Local distributor Total War Records got the copies from Dark Descent very early. Um, it only came out officially like two or three days ago, so. Um, yeah, I've been spinning this since mid-December and I've been very, very thankful because it is such a quality album. I've really been able to sink my teeth into it. Um, I almost chucked it in my 2023 end of year list before I realised, hang on, I'm not meant to have this. This is a 2024 album, so look out for it in December this year because this is an absolutely stellar album. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a bit of an on underdog though. Like Sometimes with Dark Descent bands, they blow up. You know, your bloody incantations and spectral voice and that kind of thing. Then there's bands like um, Sovereign, which, you know, I've got a feeling those that know will like it, and those that don't will come around to it later. Um, that's, you know, that's where I reckon Sovereign's gonna lie, but if you're watching this, get in on the ground early, because Altered Realities is really, really good. Thrashy style, a little bit technical, death metal. I'm not gonna say it's death thrash. I think that gives you the wrong idea. It is definitely death metal, but it is not, your double kick, blistering speed, cannibal corpse or whatever, bolt thrower. It's not, it's thrashy, it's a bit techy, it's still death metal. And uh, yeah, urge you to check it out. Sovereign, Altered Realities. We'll take a look inside. We get, um, I think I went for just black. I think there's a color, sort of, bit matches the color, uh, the cover with sort of the, the greens and the blues. I'm pretty sure I saw that, but I went for the black. Um, and, the lyric sheet, which is kind of looking very tomb mold with that colour uh, design there. There's the band. Lots of blue denim. Good stuff. And uh, yeah, check them out. Um, I would be surprised if uh, this is not something that watchers of this channel would enjoy. Um, so yeah, get in there on Sovereign Altered Realities. Really good Norwegian death rash. Next one I'm going to take a look at is some pretty brutal dark death metal right here. Absolutely. A bit of glare perhaps on this. Uh, Hibonus Mortis, the monoliths of cursed slumber. Wow. Um, I had not seen or heard of these guys. And again, this was another one on Blood Harvest. I saw the cover and went, I think I know what this is going to sound like. And I was pretty right. Um, it looks like this band has existed since the late 90s. Uh, Discogs mentions a couple of self-releases on CDR. And that's it. Um, and then there's this 2022 full length that's on Blood Harvest. I don't know what's going on there in the middle. I don't know what anything else sounds like besides this album. But um, I don't know, maybe they took a bit of a breather. The, the band reactivated, at least they, I don't know, they continued, whatever. Three quarters the same lineup. Uh, I think one of the guitarists has changed, but otherwise it's the same people from the 90s. Um, uh, yeah, with additional second guitarist. Um, so I haven't heard those early releases, but this is fantastic. Uh, it is deep and booming and evil and dark. I mean, that cover's got to tell you surely what you're going to get with this one. Um, reminds me of like early drawn and quartered, uh, those vocals particularly. I mean, they're just, they're, they're well enunciated, particularly when you're wearing headphones. You can listen, you can understand pretty much most of the time what he's saying. Um, but they are, they're down there. They're like deteriorate kind of vocals. Um, they're, just, they're diabolic is what they are. Um, guitars are churning, very low tuned. The drums carry a lot of weight. Um, the production overall, um, I mean, there's a lot of immolation here, but what I'm hearing is too is excommunion. Um, 
I hear a lot of that in this sound. Uh, very That very dark and evil sound with really big production to it. That's Excommunion. That's what I'm getting with Hibernus Mortis here. A um, little bit of Lucifer as well, who's a band that came well after these guys were formed. Um, but uh, that, it's that blasphemous dark death metal in there. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too sure why this is the first band, the, the first real pressing in 25 years from the band. I don't know what the go is there, but it's worth the wait. If these guys have been just quietly toiling in the background, absolutely worth the wait. Um, mid to faster pace, some doomier, slower sections as well. Lots of tremolo riffs, big pounding triplets. I love that sound with the drums, with the, when it's just like, it's fast, but it's not blistering, and the kick drums and the snare are sort of doing that triplet, dun, 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 dun. That's, oh, that gets me every time. I love it when man's do it. There's some a ambience, you know, like evil church bells and all that kind of stuff gets thrown in, so. Yeah, there's the guys there, Hibernus Mortis. Um, I think it's, uh, maybe this bloke here might be the newer one. Uh, well, one of the two guitarists is one of the newer ones. Uh, probably this guy then, he's on the end. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just big. It is big, immense sounding stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, nearly 40 minutes of just evil death metal with some very lengthy song titles. Um, Grotesque Perishment into the Miasma of Darkness Everlasting is quite the mouthful, but the one you want to hang out for is the final track vestigial currents that transcend the ether of tenebrous unconsciousness embedded deep within the smoldering embers of sympaternal dusk in brackets outro man come on guys <laughs> but there's like five band names in that sentence it's amazing this is yeah this is good stuff uh i'm pretty sure this has gone completely under the radar i've not heard anybody talk about this thing um yeah hibernus mortis the monolith of cursed slumber if you like that early drawn and quartered if you like obviously immolation and you like excommunion lucifer give this one a go really knock my socks off hopefully we get more from the band oh, i've just thrown something all the way over there oh damn it doesn't matter but we will check out the inner lyrics there there's the uh, band credits uh we've got an entomb shirt there what else we got uh don't know who that is Oh, that's one I recognise, but I cannot say what it is. But I do recognise the entomb. And it's on uh, black. There you go. And yeah, I did launch something over the edge of the turntable. i got to pick it up. Just a piece of paper. I'm not too sure what that was. But um, yeah. Awesome stuff. Hibernus Mortis. Monoliths of Cursed Slumber. You like it dark and ominous and booming? Give this a go. And last up, album number 10. We're going to take a look at today. This is the 2021 full length from Italy's vertebra atlantis great cover on this one lustral purge in corellian bliss um, i want to want wanted this one for a while it was on my watch list um it's through i void hanger which is a little challenging to get affordably out here in australia uh someone had a local copy for very very cheap uh second hand uh, played like once so bang very happy picked it up used on discogs near mint uh one of the many many excellent projects from uh gabriel Gramaglia, I think is how you say his name. Uh, he's the mind behind Cosmic Putrefaction, Taurus Urbania, uh, probably the best two bands. Cosmic Putrefaction is probably the most well known. Uh, but this is a full band. Those ones are his solo projects. This is a full band uh, with additional guitarist and drummer to make up a three piece. So, um, yeah, he's not doing the vocals on this either, I don't think. I think he's just doing backups. Um, if you like that twisted brand of death metal that he is pretty well known for, this is a no-brainer. You're going to like Vertebra Atlantis. Uh, bordering on progressive, sometimes quite experimental. Um, he doesn't do straightforward meat and potatoes death metal, this guy. His stuff is a bit thinking, for sure. Uh, lots going on. Definitely would appeal to fans of Suffering Hour, uh, Evangelist, bands like that. Uh, local band Convulsing, for sure. Listen to Vertebra Atlantis. Um, mostly mid-paced, fast-ish, with heavy dissonant guitar. All about the dissonance in this one. Uh, twisted, snarling vocals. Uh, quite a lot to unpack. Um, first round through, this is only going to hit your surface level. You got to keep playing that. And I mean, this is to be said with all these things. I think um, the Taurus Ebenea was the one that got me quickest, but Cosmic Putrefaction always takes a few listens to really sink in. 
Vertebrate Atlantis is, is very similar in that regard. Um, yeah, it doesn't immediately click. It's immediately good, but it doesn't immediately click. Gotta give it a few goes. Plenty of undistorted guitar sections in here. Lots of clean guitar with sort of this warped sounding, um, you know, that, that off kilter sort of Blue Taus Nord kind of weird guitar sound that happens there. Uh, lots of reverb to it. Uh, accompanying sort of like light drums during those passages, a little bit jazzy, kind of very light drums. But mostly it is just a very creative, very, no, often spontaneous, spontaneous uh, feeling, avant-garde-ish, experimental-ish, progressive-ish death metal. Uh, without wanting to say that this is an experimental death metal album and make you think it's Portal, it's not that, it's way more cohesive, but there is touches of just, just being next level, I think, with this style of music, so yeah. Uh, like I said, very creative. Here we go, that's the band, three piece, with uh, Gabrielle there at the front. All the lyrics, yeah, all the lyrics there on the left. Good stuff. Take a look in here. Just uh, an exciting black LP. Not sure if there was variants or not. So there we go, beautiful. Like I said, near mint, it was used, probably played once. Uh, that's a good way to get eye void hanger stuff. Um, I can buy them, but man, the postage. The postage is shocking. Uh, so, yeah, a good good album's going to be a grower. I played it through twice. A couple more times, it's going to start sticking, like all his stuff. So, yeah. Like I said, out on uh, I Void Hanger, and uh, he's got a newer one that came out last year. So far, only on CD. So, when that hits LP, I will pick up a copy. Vertebra Atlantis, Lustral Purge in Corellian Bliss, and that is it. That is the 10 albums we're going through today, all different types of death metal. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks for sticking with it. Uh, make sure you do like and subscribe. Check out the other things on this channel. A lot of death metal lately, and uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty more of that to come. Um, not sure what's next. I've got to do definitely a black metal update in there, and I've got a lot of OG heavy metal thrash stuff to show as well. That's pretty exciting. So stick around for those. They'll be coming soon enough over January and February. Thanks for watching. Check out this guy. Check out this guy. I'll see you next time.